Hello, and welcome to this little channel. Thank you everyone for supporting the channel up until now. Today we will continue the story of Suzuki Satoru as Ain't Soul Gown in the New World. Aura and the others returned to the table, as if they were replacing Shihautu Takatu. At a few of the tables here and there, the maid started eating again. It felt like the atmosphere was less tense now. It looked like the incident with Shihautu Takatu helped relieve some of the tension. Aura and the others each held their preferred drinks while Lumiere placed Ainz's coffee in front of him. He could smell the coffee's rich fragrance, a mysterious smell with hints of some kind of berry in it. Yggdrasil never had any cross-promotions with brands but it had a lot of content in it including foodstuffs. Normal games would probably stop at a simple coffee bean but Yggdrasil had multiple varieties of them. Each of them was also graded differently with the ones at the highest grade bringing out the best effects from the food. Therefore, the beans in Nazarek's inventory were of a good grade and this coffee should certainly be tasty. This is probably what quality coffee smells like. Would it also taste like berries? While feeling sad that his body was unable to taste it, Ainz waited until everyone took their seats to speak. Well, let's talk while enjoying our drinks. Two of the elves had melon soda while the other one had green tea with ice in it. Following Ainz's words, they took a sip. The melon soda group blinked in surprise, pressing their hands to their mouths. Their reaction was certainly not a bad one. Wow, so tasty. Sweet. The two who whispered those words quickly emptied their glasses. Ainz was counting on this to happen. He spoke gently to them, how about a refill? Ah, yes, please let us do so. The two elves immediately nodded and headed over to the drinks section. There was a spring in their steps. It's good that they liked it. Ah, yes, Ainz spoke to the remaining elf. She was probably also interested in their drinks, as she quickly finished her tea and stood up. By the way, both of the twins went with Kola and from their expression, it looked like it was nothing special for them. Many unexpected things had happened on the way, but it looked like the elves had mostly calmed down. They no longer seemed like they would doubt everything he said just because he was an undead. As expected, sweet things are effective. There are no women who would hate sweet things. A woman who can resist sweet things simply does not exist. So Makamachi Sans was correct all along. I thought it was just an excuse for her reckless eating habits. The other two female members of Ain't's Ool Gown had tilted their heads at that statement, although slimes didn't have necks, but it was not like they denied it either. With the way the elves acted just now, that counted as two things that could probably serve as proof she was not exactly wrong. Well, he still had his suspicions. Now, at last, I have gone through a lot of simulations in my mind, but I wonder if I can get a discussion about the elven country going smoothly. He remembered what they heard from the elves when they met the first time. There was no name for the country of elves that was said to be in the great forest of the south. Albedo surmised that it was because they never had the need to open diplomatic relations with other races. The other nations were far away from it in the first place. As they had no need to identify their land as something separate from the rest, just calling it a country was enough for them. However, it seemed like after being ruled for so long by a king, it was being called a kingdom. This king was supposedly super strong. What his strengths and classes were was something they did not manage to find out. At that point, the elves looked at the twins, probably wondering why they did not know about this. This country of elves was embroiled in hostilities with the theocracy at the present moment, and these elves were sold as slaves after they were captured by the theocracy. What the war was for and when did it start were questions to which these elves had no answers for. It was probably because this country of elves did not have a standardized education system. These elves also did not have any interest in learning about such matters. Although after hearing what they said, it seemed like they were at least instructed on more important skills and knowledge mostly consisting of stuff about monsters. Maybe they felt that history and similar subjects were not useful enough to be taught. When asked about the dark elves in their country, they replied that although they had never seen them, they do exist. In fact, Aura and Mary were the first dark elves they had ever met. Dark elves are likely a minority in the elven country, but it didn't seem like they were persecuted according to these elves. That said, considering the lack of knowledge these elves demonstrated, it was entirely possible that they just didn't know about it. And, that was all of it. That was all the information Ainz managed to get out of them at that time. He had to be satisfied with such meager information just so that they wouldn't get suspicious. But he had a great excuse for being proactive in asking them now. Patience is a virtue, as the saying goes. Well, I should make a decision first. Should I make the topic about wanting to open diplomatic relations between our nations? Or how about saying that I want to go to a dark elf village to find friends for Aura and Mary? 
They would be on guard if the conversation was about something on national level relations. It was easier to make them talk if it was a reason that a normal person could sympathize with. Moreover, Ainz need not lie as he was really aiming for the second reason, so it would be easier for him. Ainz was a person who could lie as much as he wanted to but that didn't mean he liked to do so. It was just that he wouldn't hesitate to lie if there was some benefit to be had. It was also better not to lie in case they somehow managed to figure out the truth later. That should be the easier way dot 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 but I can't imagine how it would turn out if I bring reason up in front of Aura and Mary. He was afraid they would feel duty-bound to make friends. In his honest opinion, friendship was something that was formed gradually with people with similar hobbies. He wouldn't call it friendship when someone was ordered to do it. Ainz remembered his friends from Yggdrasil, his former guildmates. Those comrades he made from chance meetings and through fate's machinations. It was just that he didn't know if children needed to make friends or not. Ainz, Suzuki Satoru didn't have any during his childhood and that didn't cause any problems for him in his opinion. Being that kind of person, the fact that Ainz was even thinking about things like making friends was because Emeko used to say something to that effect long ago. At the same time, he also remembered Albert responding with, that's the pipe dream of people who live in a different world than us, sarcastically laughing at her words. Ainz didn't know who was in the right here. In any case, there was nothing to lose by having friends. In that case, how about I stop thinking about it in terms of them making friends and tell them it's about making dark elf acquaintances. Whether they become friends or not will be up to them. Of course, it's all the better if they manage to make some. With that said, if there was an extreme difference in power, and standing between two parties, wouldn't it be a hindrance to the development of friendships? Everyone was equal in Yggdrasil. Ainz frowned a bit as some of his friends came to mind suddenly, but he immediately shook his head, clearing away those memories. They probably wouldn't have become friends if they had met in the real world with its inequalities. With that thought in mind, the first step should be to approach the Dark Elves in the Elven country on equal terms as much as possible. Dark Elves from the Sorcerer Kingdom's top echelon and dark elves that are a minority in the elven country wouldn't make for a good match at all. Apart from trying to conceal our status as much as possible dot dot dot. Do all fathers around the world have to think about these things this much? I wonder how Touch Me Sen did it, maybe I should have asked him for more details. While Ainz was worrying about the soon-to-be-had conversation, the elves returned back to their seats. All of them went with Kola. Oh no, I didn't get my thoughts straight yet. I should not ad-lib everything. But, there was no time left. As long as the twins were here, he could only say that this was about opening diplomatic relations. If things wouldn't go smoothly, he could just bring up the idea about making friends as a side topic. Or, maybe he could spin it as his wish to deepen relationships with the Dark Elves as a part of micro-level diplomacy. Well then, let's proceed to the main topic. The elves who were guzzling their drinks like it was the last drink of their life, suddenly stopped. We have established a nation named the Sorcerer Kingdom at present. The plan is to have various races live in coexistence. Some humans, dwarves, goblins, orcs, and lizardmen have already become citizens of our nation. Leaving aside whether or not the elves would approve of this, I want to initiate diplomatic relations with the elven nation as well as trade relations. As such, I wish to visit your nation. Won't you cooperate with us? Even though it was just an excuse right now, it was not bad to have diplomatic and trade relations with the elven country. However, there was a critical problem. Ainz cannot be the emissary for this matter. Conferring with the foreign affairs of another country and making a treaty to open diplomatic relations was something out of Ainz's capabilities. Although it went smoothly with the dwarves, he doubted that he would succeed in the same way again. Rather, it was more likely to end up the opposite of what he intended. Therefore, he wanted to send wise people in his stead if they were to engage in diplomacy. Albedo was the best choice for this, but he didn't want to assign her any additional work as she would be busy for a while managing the occupied territories of the kingdom. She would probably say it's fine if he ordered her, and she would probably be right. But, that would mean she would have to overstretch herself to make it work, so Ainz needed to keep his subordinates' mental health in mind to not overwork them. Ainz would have been extremely happy if they just made this conversation just about making personal acquaintances with the Dark Elves instead of making it about something so important. A. Ah, Ainz Ulgaon Sama. What exactly does this cooperation entail? Ainz shrugged slightly at her cautious response. First, I want to hear some details from you. Also, just Ainz is fine, you know. We will be at your service if it's something we know the elf replied with a determined look, P. But please forgive us for not being able to address you so. Aura, Mary and the maids around them who were secretly eavesdropping had perplexed expressions. If elves called him Ainz, then they would be told that they were being over-familiar and should understand their position. 
But, if they did not, they would be told, how dare they refuse Ain Sama's order. They were probably feeling conflicted because they knew that they would react in that exact way. He didn't intend to scold the maids listening in. It's not like they were doing it out of malice or simple curiosity. He felt they would go me, me to be on call if he needed them during this conversation. Is that so? That's regrettable. So, returning to the topic at hand. How is the elven country? How do you deal with monsters seeing that you live in the forest? The elves had confused expressions, as if they were just asked a weird question. While we live in the forest, our homes are on the top of trees, because it's dangerous on the ground. We make our homes by transforming trees using druid magic. The trees suitable for such magic are also grown by magic. We call them elf trees. From what they said, it seemed like the elves could change the shape of trees using druid magic. Like creating cavities inside the trees or shaping bridges between trees. An elf village was just a place where tens of those structures were bunched up together. This method of making things out of elf trees seemed to be at the core of elven culture. Not just homes or furniture, they could also create weapons and armor out of it. It was possible to make the arrows they used for hunting to be as hard as iron. Aints wanted them to demonstrate this magic as it did not exist in Yggdrasil. They were surprised at that request because from their point of view, the tree the twins lived in was an example right there. It looked like they thought it was a mutated elf tree because it looked different that could only be transformed by those two. Furthermore, as that magic can only be used on elf trees, it didn't work with other trees. Because the elves lived in such conditions, monsters that were good at climbing trees like snakes or spiders were their natural enemy. Although they had things like a night watch, those monsters also tended to be good at concealment. There were still victims every now and then. On the other hand, they did not get attacked as much by monsters that couldn't climb because it was easier to fight them off. It seemed like the elven capital the only place the elves could call a city as they were not a populous race was the only settlement that was constructed in a place without the forest's cover on the shore of a crescent-shaped lake. The seemed like was added because these elves never visited the capital and only heard about it from others. They could establish that city on a plain because there was a giant monster in the lake that captured and ate any large monsters that came nearby. I see, Ains thought, as druid magic could also provide water, living on the trees was advantageous for them. As for flying monsters, the canopy of the elf trees could act as a shield while also hiding them. Living in such circumstances, it was natural that most of the elves gain abilities as rangers or druids. In other words, they could not survive without developing such abilities. I don't know how class selection works in this world, but seems like without jobs like farmers among them, the elves are more likely to be better fighters than humans. He continued, asking them about the lifespans and population of the elves. They were evidently not that concerned about how long they lived, seeing as they did not know their own lifespan. It seemed like the oldest person there was thought to be over 300 years old. By the way, these elves didn't even know their own age. It was likely that they did not have the concept of a birthday. Perhaps it was due to their long lives, they did not give birth frequently like humans and thus their populations were much smaller. However, upon learning more, Ains thought that the number of children they had was not small at all. 